morning, everyone, and welcome to our very first webinar at Adradius in the UK. My name is Lucy Stagg, and I'm a senior manager in our commercial team. For those of you who aren't familiar with Adradius, we provide a product called Trade Credit Insurance, which specialises in protecting you from unpaid invoices. Um, today, we're with our risk expert, Owen Bassett, and we would like to discuss with you some of the risks associated with trade in the UK today. Owen, if you'd like to introduce yourself and, and your role at Trade, yes, so, so we can move on. Yeah, hi, Lucy. Hi, everybody. Um, and, and thanks for uh, giving some time over us today. Uh, as Lucy says, we, we're going to try and give you a, a run through of the current econo on economic conditions within the UK um, and, and key trade sectors within that that we feel face some pretty unique and challenging conditions. Uh, I'm a manager within our risk services department in Cardiff uh, and specialising in, in the retail, IT and food and agri sectors. So um, we've got some slides we're going to uh, work our way through and, and, and have a bit of a conversation and there'll be an opportunity at the end of the session today for you guys to ask some questions, which I believe you'll be able to do via the chat function of this meeting. Great, thanks Owen. So if we just jump straight into it then, um, as negative as this sounds, I think 2023 is going to be a, a, a little bit of a bleak year for us in the UK. Um, do you want to just kind of give us a little bit more information and insight on how, how that is going to affect businesses as we go through the year? Yeah, so the UK, when you look at uh, the economic data out there and some of the forecasts that you see right now, really stands out as uh, an area that has some pretty weak prospects for economic growth, as you can see uh, in the graph here, a really um, weak forecast versus other major economies. Um, and actually is one of those economies that has perhaps recovered at a slower rate uh, post-COVID, um, and we're going to look at some of the reasons why that is. The recent um, budget statement from the government has pointed to it possibly avoiding a, a technical recession during the period, but it's definitely going to be um, a very difficult ongoing economic picture through 2023. It's, um, I mean, it's a really tough one. We've seen inflation play a huge part in some, some of the difficulties our businesses are, uh, are facing. We all know inflation pushes pushes prices up, but I think the, the biggest challenge we face then is when businesses are then passing that 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 price rise onto consumers and end customers. Um, can you just talk to us a little bit about um, how you see companies overcoming, overcoming this price hike? Yeah, so inflation um, has been a kind of source of constant pain to, to the UK for the past two to three years now. Again, looking at this graph, you can see how the forecasts for inflation rates have continued to spike upwards, uh, initially driven by some kind of overheating of the economy from the amounts of public money put into it, and then exacerbated by the war in Ukraine and, and the energy crisis that's come along with that. So inflation rates have hit uh, this 10% level uh, and have broadly stabilised there. You can see that the forecasts for how it um, drift down from there back to maybe a normal level um, are for that to happen quite sharply. Um, but putting faith in forecasts for that is difficult right now, given um, how difficult it's been. Uh, to forecast economically over the past number of years. Um, so um, we have to see how the companies that we underwrite as risks are able to navigate that because uh, if it's an inflationary pressure that's passed on to you by your supplier, how are you going to pass it on to your end customer? And we see real challenges in areas like food, uh, which I'm sure we've all experienced in the supermarket. And that's a really good example of how much of a challenge inflation is. Um, can you, would you be able to kind of um, explain if you've seen a similar situation to this in the past and, and, and what kind of learnings we've seen from previous situations? Well, the, the, the last great period of kind of hyperinflation would have been the, the late 1970s. And, and the big lever that... Um, governments have to pull to to bring inflation down is of course interest rates 
Um, and what we've seen over the um, most recent time has been interest rates rising almost successively to the point where they reach 4%. Um, we possibly are going to see another rise coming through with current forecasts likely to see it even out at about 5%. And, and the reason why in the UK that is such a specific issue is because we are a nation both in terms of our consumer behaviour, um, our government behaviour and um, our business behaviour that, that is, it has a high propensity to borrow. And you can see on, on this graph here that uh, if you compare us to, you know, the, the, the major economies of the world, we're right up there in terms of just from a household perspective, um, the levels of debt that we, we face. And that's something that is, is also reflected in businesses. Um, we have talked about within Atradius this kind of concept of zombie businesses for the last 10 to 15 years now, and we've talked about that for so long because interest rates have been tracking at that 0, 0 0.5% level. These are businesses that are reliant on those low levels of interest rate to be able to continue to survive, and the question has to be, where do they go in a in a scenario where interest rates are far higher and interest rates are forecast not to come down at the same sort of speed as we'll see with inflation we're going to have to get used to these kind of four to five percent range for interest rates uh, for a number of years um, and businesses with high levels of gearing individuals with high levels of, of, of gearing um, are going to face a difficult time in that, and 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 that's undoubtedly going to be a factor in uh, insolvency trends that we might see uh, in in the near future. I mean, when you put it like that, it is it's quite scary, really, when you think about things. Um, now, obviously, our product is here to try and help businesses in in these quite scary times. Um, and we all know the the basis of that product is literally if you don't get paid by your customers, our policy will step in and and pay that invoice for you. But how else, other than just that that pure cash flow element, how else can our underwriters help businesses prepare for what could happen in the UK? Yeah, well, we've we've got some key areas that we focus on, and and, and we see very much as part of our our service proposition to to uh, to our customers. So we're very um, strong within my underwriting team in terms of seeking levels of transparency from uh, buyer risk that we underwrite, um, so that we are offering credit limits to our customers that are based on as up to date information as we can. Um, if you were to go back many years, we would have only relied on the information that companies uh, filed at companies' house. But now we are, you know, we're almost integrated within the the supply chain to uh, have confidential financial information about bank up to date performance and and forecasts for where they think they'll be uh, in a in a, another period. So it enables us to have this really synced up monitoring process of businesses. Um, and it, it enables us to to manage our customer base potentially away from risk that will see them see them losing out. Um, whilst also having the acceptance that one of the the major reasons um, customers will buy an insurance policy is for that unforeseen scenario uh, where business fails when when nobody anticipated that. And and this economic climate is is probably. Um, the the perfect conditions for those sorts of unforeseen um, insolvencies to, to come about. Um, two other elements maybe I'll just flag briefly at this stage would be um, the, the benefits we can provide when companies do fail. So we have a really strong recoveries team who will work with administrators and insolvency practitioners at the time of an insolvency and, and make sure that we maximise the recovery uh, of any amounts that, that are available. We use tools like All Money's Retention of Title, which is um, you know a concept not all would be familiar with, but incredibly important to uh, recovery processes. And we also have uh, a very strong fraud uh, identification team who who work to 
um, identify risks that potentially uh, are not all that they seem. We see um, huge amounts of, of companies failing uh, or companies falling foul of, of fraud and impersonation attempts in the UK. It's, it's quite a, a market that's rife with it. Um, and we will do all that we can to try and identify those to steer people away from potential bad experiences there. Great, thanks Owen. Just um, picking up a little bit on what you were talking about, bad experiences there. Um, you know, we've been focusing on on challenges and, and areas where we're going to see difficulty. If you could pick four, four sectors um, that you think face the most challenges in the UK in 2023, would you like to give us a little bit of in insight what you think those sectors are going to be? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, number one, probably for the uh, all of the most recent years, and it and it's the nature of the the industry itself is construction. Construction is a is typically a a, a large market for for credit insurance interest, so we get a good amount of data there. Um, but it is an industry that is prone to um failures that that are unforeseen due to that real difficulty in in identifying where there's a problem so all i've talked about in terms of financial analysis um we clearly still undertake that but construction failures quite often come from things that aren't in the financial so a contract that's gone wrong uh, a payment that they've not received from somewhere else in the supply chain so um, in a difficult economic climate, construction will be exposed to those sorts of things. Inflation clearly is a real challenge there in terms of its pricing of, of, of contracts. Uh, and so we, we focus on that. Um, staffing in that area, and this will be common to other sectors that I'll talk about, is, is a real issue. Um, Labour supply from the EU is at far lower levels than it was um in in previous years and, and um, that is leading to some difficulties in terms of uh, servicing sites themselves um retail again another huge uh exposure for us as a, as a business uh, one of the largest um trade sectors in terms of the appetite for uh cover um facing a, a kind of constantly changing battle to 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 react to changes in consumer behavior a, a good example in recent times would be how uh, the covid pandemic moved us all over to online shopping we already had a quite a strong propensity for um shopping online moved us all over to to online saw some really strong numbers from what we call pure play retailers but now having come out of covid a bit of a reversion to to retail uh, customers wanting to go out uh, and and shop in store. So how do you right size your business for that? Um, it's extremely competitive out there. The kind of insolvency environment of the past couple of years has meant that we haven't seen some businesses fail that potentially should have done as they've taken advantage of, of government subsidi subsidiaries and subsidies and the like. Um, we would expect that to change in, in 2023 and we're already seeing some early signs of that. Food and agriculture, one of the sectors that we would typically look at and, and feel um, it has strong and robust prospects. The, the, the kind of lazy way of looking at it is that we we all have to eat. So there's, there's always going to be a market for uh, um, product to be sold there but it is the area where the impact of brexit has been felt the most in terms of red tape um and and increased complexities and relationships with uh, both their customers perhaps if they're exporters to the to the eu or import of of particular products so um that already moved it up uh, the charts in terms of sectors to watch but then they are also um the sector that is almost the most impacted by high energy costs they need to to fuel uh, particular operations or heat particular sites so we've seen some real challenges already with businesses coming into difficulty um because of their inability to absorb that inflationary pressure and then the final element on food and agriculture that's worth mentioning is those relationships with their key customers and for many in this particular industry, those key customers at the end of the chain are the supermarkets and the supermarkets exert very strong influence 
on uh, the supply chain um, and th they have their own challenges that they have to navigate um, and they look to pass that on further up the chain. So those relationships and your ability to you know, keep a strong position in contract negotiations would be key there. Finally, probably looking at the leisure sector again since COVID had a really tough time, effectively shut down as an industry for uh, a period of time within that. Um, and you now have a, a consumer that's emerged from COVID, maybe having changed their habits. They've got trading down behavior, looking at very conscious of the prices, maybe when they're looking at a menu or uh, when they're visiting a bar or a, or a club. You look at areas like the late night sector is extraordinarily difficult at the moment as people change their behavior there. And staff shortages again, energy inflation again. What what you what you get when you look at those four trade sectors is that they all have their own unique circumstances that are driving some of the issues there. But actually, you can see some common trends, which is all part of that difficult economic picture that we've got. I mean, that's it's super insightful. Thank you so much, Owen. Um, and and a lot, really, a lot to think about. Um. If we, uh, you know, just just sort of come into the end of of our discussion now, if you could really take that information and 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 say to um, businesses trading in the UK in 2023, what would be uh, a key piece of, of of advice you would give them to try and help them to navigate these challenges as we move forward through the year? Yeah, the first thing to point to would be v vigilance on on payment behaviour. We have seen um, specific to the UK, I think, uh, in, in a trade experiences so far this year has been a real uptick in what we would term the notification of non-payments from our customers. It is um, probably reaching levels of, of pre-COVID, so, so it's not extraordinary, but it is a real step change um, and, and it is uh, a bit of an outlier versus what we're seeing um, in the rest of uh, our group. So you're looking at um, slight delays in payments coming through, requests for maybe changes in payment terms to support working capital, and um, any sort of um, flags that you can see there um, should probably be acted upon just in terms of maybe enhanced monitoring or uh, clearly within a credit insurance policy speaking with uh, uh, your provider to to see whether whether that information rings true with others, because of course, uh, what you get when you are a credit insurance customer would be that payment information coming in from a number of suppliers uh, to to a business, and 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 that's something that we uh, certainly factor into our underwriting. Um, at the same time, as much as I put it as a, a red flag, having some flexibility in your contractual arrangements with your customers and suppliers is is incredibly important at the moment. You know, when when rates of inflation are as high as they are, um, there has to be a bit of a, a share of, of that pain because the last thing that you need as a supplier, a customer, is a hole suddenly opening up in that supply chain because eventually that is going to cause some serious issues um, for you as a business. Um, so, you know, giving that, keeping that level of um, uh, openness and conversation with your key partners is, is crucial. And that, that probably leads on to the final point that I would again re-emphasize is, is seeking transparency um from from your key partners within a credit insurance policy we play a key part in that to try and uh, emphasize that transparency um but it's the it's the unknown at the minute i think that's probably something that, that we flagged throughout here that the unknowns in a, in a difficult economic picture are likely to cause problems so the more you can reduce them um the better the outcome is likely to be Great. Thank you, Owen. I think um, we should be well versed in unknowns after the last uh, after the last three or so years in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just conscious of time now. Um, I think we've got a, a, a couple of minutes for some questions in the chat. Um, I can see one here. 
So um, we've got a, a participant that's asked us, SMEs are likely to take the forefront of the downfall in the UK due to the current soaring energy prices. How can they prepare themselves to, uh, to avoid such risky downfalls? So focusing on SMEs and the yeah, challenges so, SMEs would So face. SMEs, if you kind of refer back to um, the, the, the advice I was giving there, they don't necessarily have that strength in contractual relationships that perhaps uh, larger businesses do. So we really would emphasize the vigilance on on payment behavior that that um, uh, you are experiencing with um, uh, businesses. Clearly, um, there's an element of being able to monitor your um, supply chain and their kind of financial standing is probably a task that is is beyond most SMEs. So, the consideration of outsourcing that to you know providers of credit insurance is is a uh, probably at least worth considering because um what you're going to see over the next 12 months are businesses quite often turning from what we would call strong blue chip business to a risk that has real, you know, danger of, of falling into financial difficulty in, in what is a very short period of time. Um, and to monitor that correctly, you really need to have a, a provider who is doing that on your behalf. Great. And um, I think just time for one additional question. Um, another participant has asked, is there anything you think we can learn from the 2008-2009 recession? into the uh, in regards to supply chain management yeah so i think that the, the 2008 9 recession versus this one will be a very different different one i think in terms of the forecast now you're looking at um probably quite a short and, and hopefully quite shallow recession so they're very different uh characteristics i think that the main lesson that is there to be learned is I think uh, if you look at where we were in 2008, um, we hadn't been through difficult economic times at that stage, probably for probably going back to the early 90s, really. Um, whereas, uh, you know, perma crisis is in the dictionary now, and that relates to what we've seen uh, over the last 15 years. So to give almost a positive message what we see in our interactions with with businesses is a, is a huge amount of resilience in terms of performance through you know probably three of the greatest economic crises of the last couple of centuries condensed within a, a 15 year period so um in terms of in terms of lessons it's probably more a message of you know have some optimism that businesses will fight their way through this but maintain that vigilance around specific buyers when those um, red flags or those bells go off to, to maybe um, alert you to the fact that there's something not all that it may seem in a, in a particular business, make sure you act on them um, and make sure you look to get more information, get more comfort, um, because as we all know, that th those surprise failures or surprise gaps in your supply chain can spiral into, you know, a really diff difficult uh, set of events. It's actually, I think, a really nice topic to sit and reflect on because I think we've changed as insurers as well in this mm. market. I think we are a lot more measured when we face these crises now um, with regards to how we, we write cover and how we offer cover and, and utilising the information that you spoke a little bit about earlier. So so really nice to take a look at how things um, how things have changed. So thank you for that question. Um, and that's it. I think we're all out of time. I don't want to keep anybody any longer. We've all got uh, things to be getting back to. So thank you very much for uh, taking the time out to uh, to listen to Owen today. And thank you, Owen, for your time. No problem. See you all soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.